Today is Tuesday, May 17th. We'll explain the conspiracy theory authorities say may be behind more than one recent mass shooting, and more stories of heroes who risk their lives to save others from gunfire. Also, the latest ruling from the U.S. Supreme Court that could impact how candidates raise money for their midterm election campaigns. Plus, a new deal is supposed to help with the baby formula shortage. You can once again get several free at-home COVID-19 tests and Uber's new options that range from electric vehicles to party buses. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Today, President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden are going to visit a city in mourning. They're traveling to Buffalo, New York, where over the weekend, a gunman shot 13 people inside a supermarket in a racist attack. Nearly all of the people who were killed were black. And investigators tell ABC News if the shooter had not been stopped, he would have continued his rampage, that apparently he had plans to go elsewhere to shoot more black people. But officers responded to the grocery store within one minute of it coming under fire, and they arrested the suspect. Now, investigators are specifically looking at the shooter's connection to what's known as the Great Replacement Theory. It's the same idea that has reportedly inspired several mass shootings in recent years. Basically, the racist theory says there's a plot to bring non-white people into the U.S. to replace white voters, all to achieve a political agenda. Many white supremacists believe the influx of immigrants, specifically people of color, will lead to the extinction of the white race. The theory has been around since the early 1900s, but it's become more mainstream in the last few years. We have an update about the other shooting we told you about yesterday, the one that happened at a Southern California church. The FBI is now investigating that one as a hate crime, too. They say the gunman opened fire at a church gathering of mostly Taiwanese seniors. And now, authorities believe the gunman there was motivated by hatred of Taiwan, specifically political tensions between China and Taiwan. The suspect is from China. At this point, officials don't think he knew any of the people at the church. There are also more stories of heroism coming out of that tragedy. The Orange County Sheriff says there was a doctor who charged at the gunman. Sadly, he was killed, but his efforts helped other members of the church disarm the shooter. Other people also risked their own lives to confront the shooter, including a pastor who threw a chair at him. Authorities say if it weren't for their actions, there would have been many, many more lives lost. Now the suspect is in custody facing murder and attempted murder charges. Hundreds of American troops will be going back into Somalia. This reverses a decision President Trump made. He chose to withdraw the ground troops stationed there. But now Biden administration officials say it's necessary to send some troops back to address a growing threat posed by al-Qaeda's largest affiliate. They say the terror group has been stepping up attacks, including against American personnel. So among their duties, the American troops will target the group's top leaders and help give training and intelligence to partners in Somalia. Some outside analysts, though, are criticizing this move, saying this kind of strategy has not worked before, so the U.S. might just be dragging out the conflict. By the way, this isn't the only foreign policy from the Trump administration that President Biden is now changing course on. It's also changing things up in Cuba. For example, the U.S. says it's loosening its restrictions on flights to and from the Caribbean nation, even beyond Havana. The U.S. State Department says this will help the Cuban people, quote, pursue a life free from Cuban government oppression. But President Biden is getting some mixed reactions from both Democrats and Republicans, since some say the changes will help funnel cash into the communist Cuban government. The U.S. Supreme Court has now made it easier for political candidates to pay back their own personal loans to their own campaigns using donations that they get after Election Day. In a 6-3 to three ruling, the Supreme Court sided with current U.S. Senator Ted Cruz. He's been in a legal battle because during his 2018 Senate race, he loaned his own campaign $260,000. Then, after the election was over, he wanted to get campaign donations to reimburse his own personal bank account. He said that should be his right. But the Federal Election Commission tried to have that case thrown out, saying Cruz knew he wouldn't be able to raise that much money after the fact because of anti-corruption laws. Well, most of the Supreme Court justices agreed with Cruz. They say personal loans can sometimes be the only way for an unknown challenger with limited connections to have any chance at victory. So it's important for them to give themselves a loan just to attract the attention of donors and, of course, voters. But critics, like the more liberal Supreme Court justices who voted against this, say it opens the door for quid pro quo arrangements with winning candidates. 
Like, as Justice Elena Kagan put it, all the money does is enrich the candidate personally at a time when he can return the favor. Either way, it's a done deal now. And since this is a midterm election year, people running for office now will be able to take advantage of the ruling right away. Voters in five more states are headed to the polls today. Idaho, Kentucky, North Carolina, Oregon, and Pennsylvania are holding primary elections. A lot of eyes are especially on Pennsylvania. For starters, there's a U.S. Senate race there. For the Republicans, celebrity heart surgeon Mehmet Oz is in a tight primary with a former hedge fund CEO and community activist Kathy Barnett. And on the Democratic side, Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman, who's considered a frontrunner as a Senate candidate, revealed just two days ago that he had a stroke but was on his way to full recovery. And that's just one race out of many that are expected to be very competitive in all five states. More news is coming up, but first, a quick break for our sponsor. I'm always thrilled to talk about Tommy John because my absolute favorite pair of lounge pants are my Tommy John lounge joggers. I first bought them thanks to a close friend's recommendation while I was still pregnant. I knew I would want something super cozy after having the baby, so I was on the hunt for the most comfortable lounge pants out there that still made me feel stylish and cute. And Tommy John's lounge joggers lived up to the hype. I have two pairs now. The material is super soft, it feels really good on, and it's also lightweight and easy to move around in. And by the way, Tommy John has great options for both women and men. So whether you're trying them for the very first time or you're a longtime fan, get 20% off right now at TommyJohn.com slash Newsworthy. Go to TommyJohn.com slash Newsworthy today and use the code Newsworthy for 20% off. TommyJohn.com slash Newsworthy. See site for details. Americans can now get eight more COVID-19 tests for free from the U.S. government. The U.S. Postal Service just updated its site, saying people can place another order for eight at-home rapid tests. Just go to the site, fill out your name and address, and the tests will show up in your mailbox. If you want to place an order, just check out the link in today's episode notes on thenewsworthy.com. Speaking of COVID-19 tests, the FDA just authorized a new one from LabCorp that tests for not only COVID, but other respiratory viruses too, the flu and RSV. And you don't need a prescription to get this kind either. Once you get it, you'll have to do your own nasal swab from home, and then you send it back into LabCorp for testing. Then you'll be able to see your results on an online portal. If you test positive or the results come back as invalid, a healthcare provider will follow up. The test kit costs $170, but if you have insurance and meet the clinical guidelines, you won't have to pay anything up front. There's a new agreement between one of the largest manufacturers of baby formula in the country and the FDA. The goal is to make more formula available ASAP. As you know, there's a massive infant formula shortage in the U.S., and part of what has contributed to that shortage is a big recall. Abbott Nutrition makes Similac and other popular brands, and its manufacturing plant in Michigan was shut down earlier this year due to possible bacterial contamination. Well, now the FDA says Abbott has agreed to fix the safety issues at the plant, and Abbott says it is set to reopen the facility in two weeks. Then it's expected to take another six to eight weeks before the baby formula from that site can make it onto store shelves. Both the FDA and the company say the safety of the formula and providing enough of it are both top priorities. JetBlue is not giving up its efforts to acquire Spirit Airlines. Twice already, Spirit's board of directors turned down JetBlue's offer to buy them, citing concerns that antitrust regulators would not give this deal the go-ahead. Instead, Spirit seemed to stay focused on a potential merger agreement with Frontier Airlines. But now JetBlue has launched a hostile takeover. In other words, JetBlue is going straight to Spirit's shareholders, hoping they'll vote against the Frontier deal and sort of force the deal with JetBlue instead, arguing JetBlue can offer more value and benefits. If either deal goes through, it would create the fifth largest airline in the U.S. Stay tuned. Uber announced a slew of new features and options. For example, a new feature rolling out this week in the U.S. lets you upload your trip itinerary so you can book rides along the way while you travel. And launching this summer, you'll be able to book a party bus or passenger van on the app through a partnership with U.S. Coachways. Passengers will also be able to request a ride in a premium electric vehicle like a Tesla, though that's only available in certain cities in California for now. Also, at certain stadiums across the country, users will be able to order from the concessions using Uber Eats so they can skip the line and just pick up their order when it's ready. 
And speaking of Uber Eats, it's now testing out delivering food to people's homes with robots. The robots will roll on sidewalks for short trips, and self-driving cars will deliver the meals for the longer rides. Customers will get instructions on how to get their meals out once the robots arrive. The two pilot programs are through partnerships with other companies and launched in the Los Angeles area this week. Well, that's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Trivia Tuesday, when we ask a different trivia question every week. But first, this podcast is sponsored by Pampers. Okay, parents, if you have an active baby or toddler like I do, then you know that means they're not just active at playtime, they're also active on the changing table, which is not so fun for us parents. That's just one of the reasons I am loving Pampers Cruisers 360 Fit Diapers. Cruisers 360 Fit allows me to avoid trying to secure the diaper tape between kicks, (laughs) and instead it's quick and easy to just pull them on my little wiggly one. Then it's super easy to remove them in seconds with easy tear sides. And the 360 gap-free fit is great for playtime as well. I love that it stretches around my baby's waist so there's no gapping, leaking, or falling off. Instead, my baby is free to play, feeling comfortable and dry. In fact, to keep baby skin healthy, Cruiser's 360 Fit locks wetness away from skin for up to 12 hours. It lets us all sleeve through the night. And little rashes here and there that we used to notice are not happening anymore. So buy in-store. Look for the Pampers Cruisers 360 Fit and download the Pampers Club app today to start earning rewards with every diapers and wipes purchase. Okay, now back to Trivia Tuesday. Today's trivia question is, what's the smallest country in the world by area? You can answer the question and play along on Instagram. Just find and follow us at NewsworthyPod and look for the trivia quiz in our Instagram stories today. As for last week's trivia question, a male donkey is a jack, but what is the female called? The answer is a... Jenny. And both Jacks and Jennies are found all throughout the world. A wild herd of donkeys is usually led by one Jack, and it includes several Jennies. But experts say donkeys don't seem to care who's in their herd as long as no one tries to get too dominant with the main Jack. Donkeys also don't really care who they breed with. They form relationships with other donkeys or horses or zebras. And with that, there end up being all kinds of new names, like a Jack that mates with a female horse can make a mule whereas a jenny and a male horse produce a hinny. When a zebra and a donkey mate, there are all kinds of names for their babies. Some call them zebroids, zonkeys, or even zedonks. All right, thank you so much for listening today and making us part of your routine. We'll be back with another news roundup tomorrow. Until then, have a great day.